What really went down back there on that boat? We missed you. That's what happened. Come on. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we are digging into 10 Red Dead Redemption theories that might be true. For this list, we'll be looking at the most interesting fan theories about the characters, plot, and universe of Red Dead Redemption that could be true, if you're willing to stretch your brain a little bit. Do you think any of these could actually be true? Let us know in the comments below. Before we continue, we publish content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of our latest videos. Revolver is a tale. Darling! Ah. Son! Our troubles are finally over. Red Dead Revolver was the game that came six years before Red Dead Redemption. Redemption isn't strictly a sequel to Revolver, but is considered to be more of a spiritual successor to the original game. That is why the theory that Red Dead Revolver is a fictional tale within the Red Dead Redemption world has become so popular. There are two versions of this theory. Theory A suggests that the tales of Red Harlow and Red Dead Revolver exist as fictional slash exaggerated stories about a real man or possibly a fictional man and are written as books. Jack explains a book he's reading to John that is eerily similar to the story of Revolver. Theory B proposes that Red Dead Revolver is a story that Jack would go on to write using inspiration from Arthur, his father, and the stories he read as a kid. Interesting stuff. Do you enjoy tales of the Wild West? Not so much anymore. I've been reading about knights. You know, of the round table. Blackwater Woman. What really went down back there on that boat? We miss you. That's what happened. Come on. The Blackwater Massacre is an event in RDR2's story that is only spoken about in vague detail. The game begins shortly after this event, and what we learn over time is that Dutch wanted the gang to rob a ferry with $150,000 on board. After a successful robbery, they were overpowered by police and Pinkertons, and lost a few of their own people when things turned ugly. The ugliest detail about the story that many of the gang have difficulty talking about is that Dutch shot and killed an innocent woman. But why did Dutch shoot this girl? Did he just lose control or was it on purpose? It is never answered within the story, but some players theorize that Dutch used the woman as a distraction in order to escape the law. This theory has a lot of weight behind it because we've seen him do it before. In Red Dead Redemption 1, Dutch uses an innocent woman to put distance between himself and John. This encounter that would come later chronologically adds a lot of weight to this theory about what happened at the Blackwater Massacre. No! God damn! Plague. Undead Nightmare, the DLC for Red Dead Redemption, is one of the most popular and most enjoyed video game DLCs of all time. Fans of this zombie shooter set in the same world as Red Dead Redemption were feeling pretty assured they would get a taste of Undead Nightmare 2 once RDR2 released. But after five years, fans are getting less hopeful. In Northeast Lemoyne, players can find an abandoned settlement reminiscent of The Walking Dead with Stay Out, Plague written on the locked barn. Other eerie messages written around town helped fuel the theory that this was the setup for Undead Nightmare 2. Five years later though, I feel like we're grasping at straws on this one. Landon Ricketts is Red Harlow. What a great way to improve border relations. After John narrowly escapes death in an effort to get to Mexico in Red Dead Redemption, he can eventually come across a town and a retired gunslinger. After the gunslinger and John exchange jabs, he reveals himself to be Landon Ricketts. John's reaction is enough to let us know that Landon is no joke in the Red Dead universe as a legendary cowboy. Some players theorize that due to their skills, their striking resemblance, and how little is known about Harlow post Red Dead Revolver and Ricketts post Red Dead Redemption, that the famed gunmen are one in the same. There isn't much to back this theory apart from resemblance, but perhaps we'll learn more in Red Dead Redemption 3. Who is Francis? Hey, can I ask you a strange question? I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but I'm on the level. I don't have a clue what you just said. Well, I'm sorry, sport. Uh, there's these funny rock carvings. They look a bit like this. Okay. When wandering past a cabin near Strawberry in RDR2, the player can encounter a strange red-haired man by the name of Francis, who explains to the player how he is searching for carvings in rock formations. 
The player can find these carvings all over the map, many of which depict future historical events, and some may even feature Francis himself or a man dressed in similar attire. Once returning to the cabin, the player finds a woman who he thinks is Francis' wife. The woman turns out to be his mum, and in her arms is a red-headed baby with the exact same birthmark as the adult man we met earlier. Oh, and the same name. It's assumed that due to this, as well as the sketches on the walls depicting Francis moving through a portal and futuristic structures like the Empire State Building, that Francis is a time traveller. There is also a theory that suggests he is connected to the Epsilon program in GTA 5, the Scientology-esque cult that depicts a man with the same birthmark as a possible descendant of the famous Emperor of the Fourth Paradigm, Gavin the Time Traveller. I- I'm looking for my mate Gavin. Somebody help me! Another entry that is directly linked to the portal depicted in the cabin that Francis, the possible time traveller, was hanging out at. Many players assume Francis put up all the drawings and depictions of the portal and future events inside the cabin, but considering his mother lives there and seems to make no mention of an adult version of her baby wandering around, it's more likely the sketches were done by her deceased husband, Tom. Keep that name in your mind. Throughout RDR2, the player will encounter Nigel, an Englishman who is constantly in search of his friend Gavin. He never finds Gavin, and neither does the player, but should they kill Nigel, they will read a letter that tells the story of Nigel and Gavin's arrival and their exploits in the Wild West, the letter written by a man named Tom. Some players theorize that this Tom and the Tom who is the father of the time traveler Francis are one in the same and that Tom is not dead and Gavin is not missing, but they simply entered the portal depicted in Tom's drawings. Did any of that make sense? Damn. Gav! Uh, Gav! Emerald Ranch. Emerald Ranch is an interesting location with an off-putting aura and a ton of evidence scattered around to draw players to an understanding about its history. Here is what we know about Emerald Ranch. It's quoted as a strange place by NPCs, and Hosea himself says there's something strange about that place. We know there are two residents still on the property, a father and a daughter, the latter of which never leaves the house. There is a letter found at another location where a woman named Annabelle is writing to her cousin Miriam. She mentions in the letter that Miriam had recently lost a loved one named Joshua and goes on to inquire why she hasn't answered her last six letters. At Emerald Ranch, a grave with the name Joshua Burgess sits outside. This has created the theory that Joshua was the love interest of the daughter, who is Miriam, and that the father killed Joshua and now is keeping Miriam against her will. Players can even spot Miriam looking out of the top floor window, creepy. Manzanita Post Murders. This one, like the rest, is a little complicated because it has a few pieces to the full picture. First is the Norwegian photo and Norwegian journal entry found at Manzanita Post, a small settlement in the wooded region of West Elizabeth. The photo shows a man and a woman with an infant child, and on the back, the word unclean is written in Norwegian. The journal entry is written by someone who says they hate to sleep because their faces are the only thing I see, their screams the only thing I hear, and father says it was the only option. A newspaper scrap found nearby talks of a man, a woman, and two-year-old child who were beaten to death. Due to the fact that the woman belonged to a religious cult, players theorized that the group at Manzanita Post were all part of this group, and that they fled this location after murdering the woman and her, quote, unclean family. The newspaper scrap mentions the man was of French North African descent, suggesting the murders were more than likely a religious hate crime. The Strange Man. Hello, John. John Marston. Do I know you? I hope so. I seem to know you. Most fans will remember the Strange Man from the first Red Dead Redemption. In RDR1, many have concluded that the strange man is the devil due to the symbolism of him meeting with John Marsden three times, once in a desert, once in a city, and once atop a hill with a scenic view. For those unfamiliar with the Bible, it's said that when Satan was tempting Jesus, he first tempted him in the desert, and then in a city, and then atop a hill with a scenic view. You get the picture. His brief appearance in RDR2 continues to fuel the flames of paranormal possibilities. In a small shack in Le Moyne, the player finds weird writings that reflect the story to come and experiences you've already had. A canvas is painted to depict the strange man from the previous game, and as you enter the shack, you can see him standing in the mirror behind you. Once you look, he disappears. 
Be gone, Satan. Jack's dad. My name is Jack Marston. You knew my father. If you manage to get through the entirety of both Red Dead Redemption games without at any point considering the possibility that Jack isn't John's biological son, then congratulations. Your unsuspecting nature is admirable. If you're like me and wondered if it's possible somebody else in the gang fathered Jack while Abigail was working as the gang's prostitute, then welcome to entry number one. The suspicion of Jack's parentage is a very light theme throughout the game, but it's woven loosely into John's reasoning for leaving the gang for a year. But if not John, then who? Many thought it may turn out to be Arthur, but there is little to no evidence pointing to that. The most popular theory comes down to adult Jack's eerily similar appearance to one member of the gang in particular, Javier Escuela. It's stated that, quote, everyone had their way with her, so it could be assumed that Javier was a part of that. As unfortunate as it would be for the Marston family, there's no denying the similarities. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Mojo Plays and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of our latest videos.